Okay, welcome back to my YouTube channel here. Um, I'm here with Toothless, and we're going to do some uh, reading for you. Um, we're going to be in Chapter 10 of your history book. Um, the title of this chapter is Growth and Expansion, 1790 to, seven, or 1790 to 1825. Um, we're starting in Chapter 1, Section 1, um, page 304, um, Economic Growth. American Diary. Lucy Larkham start... Yes, I know. Yes, yes. This is all about you, Toothless. All right. Lucy Larkham started working in the textile mills of Lowell, Massachusetts at 11 years of age. She later recalled her life in the factory. Quote, I had learned to do a spinner's work, and I obtained permission to tend some frames that stood directly in front of the river window with only them and the wall behind me extending half the length of the mill, and one young woman beside me. I was, when with strangers, rather a reserved girl, so I kept myself occupied with the river, my work, and my thoughts." Close quote. From A New England Girlhood. Page 305. The Growth of Industry. Main Idea. New technology changed the way things were made. Do you know someone who works in a factory? What is his or her job like? Read to learn how new technology spurred the Industrial Revolution in New England. Lucy Lar Larsom was one of the many young women who worked in the new industries that developed in the Northeast during the early 1800s. Since colonial times, most people lived and worked on farms, the short supply for jobs outside of the home. To make up for this lack of workers, Americans developed tools that made their jobs easier and more efficient. People working in their homes or in workshops made cloth and most other goods. Using hand tools, they made furniture, farm equipment, household items, and clothing. In the mid-1700s, however, the way goods were made began to change. These changes appeared first in Great Britain. British inventors created machinery to perform some of the work involved in cloth making, such as spinning. Because these machines ran on water power, British cloth makers built textile mills along rivers and installed the new machines in these mills. People left their homes and farms to do work in the mills and earn wages. This historic development is so important that it is known as the Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution in New England the Industrial Revolution took root in the United States around 1800. The changes appeared first in New England. The region's geography contributed, or added, to the development of the Industrial Revolution. First, farming was difficult with New England's poor soil. Many people willingly gave up farming to find work elsewhere. Second, New England had rivers and streams to provide the water power needed to run the machines in the new factories. Third. New England was close to other resources, including coal and iron deposits in Pennsylvania. Fourth, the area had many ports. Raw materials like cotton, as well as finished goods like cloth, were shipped through these ports. Page 306, New Technology. The invention of new machines and technology led to the Industrial Revolution. For example, the spinning jenny, the water frame, which spun thread, and the power loom, which wove the thread into cloth, allowed many steps in making cloth to be done by machine. These machines saved both time and money. In 1793, Eli Whitney of Massachusetts invented the cotton gin. The cotton gin was a simple machine that quickly and efficiently removed the seeds from the cotton fiber. Whitney also started using interchangeable parts. These were identical machine parts that could be put together quickly to make a complete product. These parts also made machine repair easier. Interchangeable parts allowed for the production of different kinds of goods on a large scale. This reduced the price of goods. Patents and Factories In 1790, Congress passed a patent law to protect the rights of inventors. A patent gives an inventor the sole legal right to the invention and its profits for a certain period of time. Although the British tried to keep their new industrial technology a secret, 
a few British workers brought their knowledge to the United States. One such worker was Samuel Slater. He memorized the design of the machines used in the British factory in which he worked. Once in the United States, Slater took over the management of a cotton mill in, pa in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. There he duplicated the British machines that made cotton thread. Women working in their homes then wove the thread into cloth. Slater's mill worked an important step in the Industrial Revolution in the United States. Francis Cabot Lowell improved on Slater's process in 1814. In Lowell's textile plant in Massachusetts, all the stages of cloth making were performed under one roof. Lowell began the factory system, where all manufacturing steps are brought together to one place to increase efficiency. Page 307, Free Enterprise. Industrial growth requires an economic system that allows competition to flourish with little government interference. Capitalism is the economic system of the United States. Under capitalism, individuals put their capital or money into a business hoping that the business will be successful and make a profit. Free enterprise is another term used to describe the American economy. In a free enterprise economy, people are free to buy, sell, are, are free to buy, sell, and produce whatever they want. They can also work wherever they wish. The major elements or parts of free enterprise are competition, profit, private property, and economic freedom. Business owners have the freedom to produce the products that they think will sell the best and be the most profitable. In a free enterprise economy, buyers also compete to find the best products at the lowest prices. Reading check. Describing. How did New England's physical geography support the growth of industries? Agriculture expands. Oh yes, yes, we didn't forget about you toothless. All right, okay. Agriculture expands, main idea. Agriculture expanded and remained the leading occupation of most Americans in the 1800s. History and you. Do any of your relatives own and work on a farm? Read to learn how agriculture expanded in the 1800s. Although many New Englanders went to work in factories during the first half of the 1800s, agriculture remained the country's leading economic activity. Most Americans still lived and worked on farms. In the Northeast, farms were small and worked by families. Farmers in the Northeast usually marketed their produce locally. In the South, cotton production rose dramatically. The demand for cotton grew steadily with the development of the textile industries of New England and Europe. Page 308. Southern plantation owners used enslaved workers from Africa to plant, tend, and pick the cotton. The recently invented cotton gin encouraged the planters to raise even larger amounts of the crop. The new machine made it possible to clean cotton faster and more cheaply than could be done by hand. Between 1790 and 1820, cotton production soared from 3,000 bales produced per year to more than 300,000 bales produced per year in the South. Agriculture also expanded in the West. Southern farmers seeking new land moved west to plant cotton. Western farmers in the region north of the Ohio River concentrated on raising pork and cash crops such as corn and wheat. Reading check. Contrasting. How was the agriculture different in the Northeast than in the South? Economic independence. Main idea. The growth of factories and trade led to the development of corporations and cities. History and you. If you had your choice, would you prefer living in the city or in the country? Why? Read to learn about the growth of cities in the 1800s. Small investors such as shopkeepers, merchants, and farmers financed most new businesses. These people invested their money in hopes of earning profits if the new businesses succeeded. Low taxes, minimum government regulations, and competition encouraged people to invest in new industries. Corporations develop. Large businesses called corporations began to develop rapidly in the 1830s when legal obstacles to their formation were removed. Page 309. The rise of, the new, of these new corporations made it easier to sell stock, shares of ownership in a company to finance improvement and development. Cities come of age. The growth of factories and trade led to the growth of towns and cities. 
Many cities developed along rivers because factories could take advantage of the water power and ship goods to markets more easily. Older cities such as New York, Boston, and Baltimore also grew as centers of commerce and trade. Along New York City's South Street, shipping piers extended for three miles, or 4.8 kilometers. The value of merchandise shipped from these piers rose from $84 million in 1825 to $146 million in 1836. An English traveler wrote of the busy New York City waterfront. Primary source, quote, every thought, word, look, and action of the multitude seemed to be absorbed by commerce, close quote quoted in The Growing Years by Margaret L. Coit. Moving westward, towns such as Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Louisville um, pro profited from their locations on major rivers. As farmers in the west shipped more of their products by water, these towns grew rapidly. Cities and towns looked quite different uh, from modern urban areas. Buildings were made of wood or brick. Streets and sidewalks were unpaved, and barnyard animals often roam freely. There were no sewers to carry away waste and dirty water, so the danger of diseases such as cholera and yellow fever was very real. In 1793, for example, a yellow fever epidemic in Philadelphia killed thousands. Fire posed another threat to cities. Sparks from a fireplace or chimney could easily ignite a wooden building spread to others. Few times Few towns or cities had organized fire companies, thus fires could be disastrous. Cities and towns offered many opportunities such as a variety of jobs to choose from and steady wages. As cities grew, libraries, museums, and shops were built, providing people with places to enjoy during their leisure time. For many, the jobs and attractions of city life outweighed any of the dangers. Reading check. Analyzing. Why were rivers important for the growth of cities. Section 1, review. Def number 1, vocabulary. Define each term in a sentence. And for these, I just we usually just have kids, uh, what I want you guys to do is just write the definition like we usually do in class. Contribute, cotton gin, interchangeable parts, patent, factory system, capitalism, capital, free enterprise element. Main ideas. Two, summarizing. How did inventions like the cotton gin and interchangeable parts revolutionize the textile industry? Number three, explaining. Why were southern plantations able to increase their cotton production between 1790 and 1821? Number four, specifying. What conditions encouraged people to invest in the city in in the new businesses. Let me start that again. Number four, specifying what conditions encourage people to invest in the new businesses. Critical thinking. Determining cause and effect. Use a diagram like the one below to identify why the Industrial Revolution first began in New England. Characteristics of New England. And below that you see the word Industrial Revolution. Okay guys, I uh, hope that was of help to you. Uh, enjoy your day, and uh, Toothless and I wish, oh yes, we didn't forget about you, Toothless. We, we wish you a great day. All right, Coakley, in this case, Toothless out.